In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss standard deviation and margin of error. I'm going to discuss and show what happens to margin of error when standard deviation changes. As standard deviation increases, so does the margin of error. Again, standard deviation goes up, so does the margin of error. And I'll have a couple examples of this I want to show you now. I'm going to use the confidence interval equation. I'm going to calculate margin of error and hold all the other variables constant. And I'll also calculate confidence interval. Let's imagine that the mean is 80. The standard deviation to start is 20. The sample size is 100. The confidence coefficient is 1.96, and I discussed this in other videos. Let me put a table in it, and I'm going to populate this table as I go. So I'll put the 20 down there for the standard deviation. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate the margin of error. It's 1.96 times the standard deviation, which is 20, divided by the sample size, which is 100. This is equal to 1.96 times 20 divided by 10, which is the square root of 100. This is equal to 1.96 times 2. And this is equal to 3.92. Now I'm going to calculate the confidence interval. And the confidence interval is equal to 80 plus or minus the margin of error. We know the margin of error is equal to 3.92. So the lower bound is 80 minus 3.92, which is equal to 76.08. The upper bound is equal to 80 plus 3.92, which is equal to 83.92. The margin of error is equal to 3.92, the lower bound and the upper bound. Now I'm going to change the standard deviation to 10 and make the same calculations again. The standard deviation is 10. I'm going to calculate the margin of error, which is equal to 1.96 times 10 divided by the square root of 100, which is equal to 1.96 times 10 divided by 10, which is equal to 1.96 times 1, which equals 1.96. The confidence interval becomes the mean, which is 80, plus or minus the margin of error. The margin of error is equal to 1.96. The lower bound becomes 80 minus 1.96 or 78.04. The upper bound becomes 80 plus 1.96 or 81.96. Let me add all these to the table. Now I'm going to increase the standard deviation to 30. I'm going to make the same calculations again. Now you should be getting pretty good at them. I'm going to start with the margin of error as before. So the margin of error is equal to 1.96 times 30 divided by the square root of 100, which is equal to 1.96 times 30 divided by 10, which is equal to 1.96 times 3, and this equals 5.88. The confidence interval is equal to 80, which is the mean, plus or minus the margin of error, and in this case it's 5.88. So the lower bound is 80 minus 
5.88, which is 74.12. The upper bound is 80 plus 5.88, which is 85.88. The margin error is 5.88 and has gone up quite a bit since the beginning. The lower bound is 74.12, and the upper bound is 85.88. Notice how as the standard deviation has increased, so has the margin of error. Now let me get rid of all this stuff, and I'm going to graph this. When I plot the margin of error along the y-axis and the standard deviation along the x-axis, I can easily see as standard deviation increases, so does the margin of error. I start out with a standard deviation of 10 and increase it to 30, so I see the margin of error go from 1.96 to 5.88. So what does all this mean? Let me tell you. As the standard deviation increases, so does the margin of error, and the width of the confidence interval goes up as well. As standard deviation increases, it becomes harder to predict the population mean.